Hey everyone, welcome to this video. In this video we are going to discuss the DevOps salary range in today's market. Now let's have a look at the agenda for today. We are going to look at primarily full-time jobs which require you to either go to an office or maybe work from home on some days of the week, but full-time jobs will be the focus of this video. We'll have a look at the salary range based on a number of parameters such as experience, expertise, and location. Then we'll look at uh, challenges faced at various levels, we'll look at role-based salary, and then what is the tool set required in the current market to be a successful DevOps engineer. So full-time jobs. You normally look for those on Indeed or Dice in the United States, and in India you would look on Knockery or Monster. So there's a normal interview process for a full-time job where you go to their office and you have your resume and you justify your resume in a face-to-face -face interview. So initially it might be a screening over the phone and then perhaps a Skype video screening. And then they may call you in to have a face-to-face -face interview with their technical or HR teams depending on the complexity of the process or the organization. And then finally, you might have a salary discussion where they want to know the details of your current salary and what your expectations are. Now, if you're coming from a non-DevOps background, they might also want to discuss what your expectation is coming from a non-DevOps background. So your salary expectation might be different based on your background. And then finally, you would receive an uh, offer letter and be hired. Now, let's have a look at what you might expect in the offer letter from a salary perspective. So there is a different salary range depending on your level of experience and that would be obviously different at each level. So say you're a fresher, um, it's going to be different than if you had three years experience and that's going to be different than someone with say six years experience or which would be different than someone with 10 years experience or more. So let's have a look at the salaries for various levels of experience. As a fresher out of college in the U.S., you're looking at $56,000 per annum, and that's including all benefits. In India, you get uh, 300000 INR per annum, and that's including PF and any other allowances. Uh, the work you're expected to do is entry-level work, which would be basic troubleshooting, uh, Linux debugging. It could be on-call support. Sometimes you're kept on call under the shadow of a senior resource. Uh, most of the time in the office, you will be shadowing under a senior resources and you would be working under their mentorship. They will be guiding you on tasks which uh, you need to perform and they will be helping you on issues which you are not able to solve. You will be enrolled in the basic training on DevOps tools like Chef, Puppet, Ansible, and scripting languages as well. And you would uh, also be assigned to fix minor production bugs. Now, as I said previously, on-call support may be required frequently and you will be asked to work as a shadow under senior resources because you can't fix issues in production single-handedly at that stage. Now let's go to the next level for someone with three years of experience. The salary for someone with uh, three years of experience in the U.S. is $80,000 per annum. In India, it's $800,000 INR per annum and you uh, will be required to have mid-level technical experience and the work is also mid-level technical and the issues and tasks assigned are uh, not really highly technical. You are required to take initiative on your own and suggest things although your suggestions might not be the route that the company takes. Major production issues are assigned to you although you might be given some help or mentorship where necessary. Uh, you are also required to participate in corporate change and design meetings and you might be involved with the architects or design meetings uh, where your input might be taken. So let's have a look at someone with six years of experience with regard to their salary and work experience expectations. Now in the US the salary is around $100,000 per annum and in India the salary is around $1,400,000 INR per annum. Expert level work is expected at this level and no training is provided. For most of the work you'll be concentrating on Chef, Puppet and Ansible and you will be working to uh, fix production issues. You'll be working to get things automated and solve day-to-day -day, uh, issues of the dev team. You'll provide remedies and suggest new technologies. You'll also be required to work on scripting in Python or Shell and you will be required to automate application deployments and set up continuous delivery and continuous integration pipelines. You'll also be required to set up uh, monitoring and logging systems and you'll be required to know Linux debugging in depth. So you should know how Linux works and how to debug production issues in Linux. 
Now, for someone who has more than 10 years experience, the salary in the U.S. would be 130000 per annum, and in India, 200000 INR per annum. Now, these are just ballpark figures. Now, for someone with this much experience, salary is really based on negotiation. If you have more certifications or if you, have, um, if you know more tools, like if you're an expert in Python, Chef, or Ruby, you can uh, get up to 150000 in the U.S. and twenty-five or 30 or even more in India. At this level, architecture and design level work is expected out of you and you should suggest how to architect stuff. Solution architecture is also expected because a client may want to implement a new solution and you would be required to give your input there. You will be mentoring and leading teams of six or seven people at this stage. You'll also be involved in client interactions. You are also required to be an expert in at least one of the programming languages and configuration management tools. Uh, I would say Python would be the best choice because it's very popular and it integrates with a lot of other systems. So at this stage you should have a good number of certifications and you should know at least a couple of uh, programming languages. You should be familiar with at least one or two cloud platforms and you should have an architecture level understanding of those things. Now let's have a look at the DevOps toolset required for a typical DevOps engineer in the market these days. So you should know one of the cloud platforms. Uh, it could be Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, or maybe Microsoft Azure. You should also know about configuration management tools like Chef, Puffet, and Ansible. These are the most popular in the market right now. And at least you should know Chef and Ansible. So uh, for application deployment, you should know one of the CICV tools. The most popular ones on the market today are Jenkins and Bamboo. From a scripting perspective, you should know Python, Ruby, and Shell. Well, Python is the hot one on the market, and it has a high-level language and gives you very easy interface uh, to automation frameworks. From a Linux perspective, you should know at least Ubuntu because that's the default OS for the cloud right now. From a containers perspective, you should know Docker and Kubernetes. That's good. But uh, Docker is a prerequisite. Every job description in the market requires you to have a knowledge of containers. And finally, uh, once you deploy systems, you really need to monitor them. So you should have good knowledge on one of the monitoring systems. So Nagios is one of the open source leaders. Uber uses Nagios to monitor its systems. Splunk is from the interface side, so it's, it's good to know either one of these. The Simply Learn advantages are there's a comprehensive hands-on training program which covers each topic in detail. We have support for lab issues, so if you have any issues in your local lab, you could raise a support ticket. We have the latest industry-based content which gives you good insight to what people are actually using. Uh, we have an amazing collection of self-paced courses which uh, you can subscribe to. We have related technology courses, so let's say you do a DevOps course and you now want to do an AWS course. We have that. At Simply Learn, we help you learn everything from scratch. There's no assumption that you know anything. So we do it all from scratch. We let you do all the setups from scratch. Every setup of every tool, every programming language is taught from scratch. So that gives you an edge in the industry and you'll know the ins and the outs of things. And all the courses at Simply Learn are designed in such a way so that you can understand them easily. Thanks for your time and good luck in your career. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.